everyone, I'm Chloe Condon, Senior Developer Relations Engineer at Google. And today I'm joined by Matt Rutland, founder and CEO of Clario. We're gonna be talking about Clario's partnership with BigQuery to provide machine learning tools for their customers. Welcome, Matt. It's very nice to be here. We're so excited to chat with you today. Tell us a little bit about Clario for folks that don't know. Clario is a um, automated audience builder. It's a specialized type of a customer data platform is the sort of industry jargon for the tool. Uh, it specializes in taking all of the first party or owned customer data, primarily from retailers, travel, hospitality companies that have large customer databases, bringing that data in-house and then um, transforming it in, in machine learning parlance, it's called feature engineering. Okay. So you're basically transforming this data into features which are going to be predictive of some future behavior for those customers. Hmm. Um, most customer data platforms are oriented towards a single snapshot in time. They take a picture of each of the customers across maybe a, a hundred different characteristics that describe them. Um, and that is stored always for what they look like today. Hmm. Something Clario does that's very different because of our orientation towards machine learning is we create a picture of every customer every day for multiple years. Could you tell us a little bit about Clario's AI and machine learning needs and how you landed with BigQuery? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was given the directive to transform all of the business from services to software as a service, so a subscription-based business. Just a small task. Small, just minor, <laughs> yeah, little work. Um, and so when I was given that task, one of the first things I started looking at is how are we going to extract all of this knowledge from these uh, brilliant minds that I was surrounded by, uh, the co-founders, put that into um, software, codify that into the software, and then deploy that out to our customers. And so we started an evaluation of all of the, the technologies that were available at the time. So this is probably 2016 and 17 now. BigQuery was really a no-brainer for us because it was uh, very secure. The data is encrypted, extremely fast as an analytic query engine. And our primarily our primary concern was extracting the, the fast analytic query. We're not a transactional system. It wasn't about load. It was about complicated queries and being able to extract that data very quickly. Um, and it was perfect for that. Um, it was consumption based. Um, the competitive solutions, I think even to this day, there's a lot of uh, configuration and provisioning, a lot of DevOps that you have to do to set up the environment. Uh, BigQuery, we loaded the data, uh, configured the schema a little bit, and it was good to go. So that made it uh, very easy for us to implement that as the back end of the solution. Um, but you asked specifically about AI ML. Um, at the time, AI was not cool. Uh, so 2017, no one was talking about AI. But ML was big, right? Uh, everybody understood, or not everybody, but many people understood that there was a significant value to being able to predict human behavior and then get in front of that with your marketing, which is how we helped them. Um, and so uh, the machine learning at that time was a real challenge for us because um, one of the things that you'll hear a lot about in ML and AI is about proximity. So you load the data from the customers into BigQuery, but if the prior to the launch of BigQuery ML, if the data is not located there, you have to do that query and then you have to move that data somewhere where the analytic processing, the model building can take place. Right. Um, and so we looked at a variety of solutions. We were actually pulling the data out of the system and using competitive tools and it, and it results in it's not as secure. You're taking the data and moving it somewhere, which is always risky. Um, and uh, the time and overhead and cost associated with pulling the data out and then putting it back in form of a model. Basically, you've gone at that point round trip. We receive the data from our customers we adopted tools like dbt, which allowed us to uh, write configuration that executed right in BigQuery as well. Mm -hmm. So the raw data from the customers would be transformed into the features that would be used um, for the machine learning models. The models would be built right in the platform. Uh, they would be scored or inferred right in the platform. 
and then they would be packaged up and ready to ship out wherever the activation against those customers and, and models needed to take place. So how has BigQuery ML accelerated development? How has it changed the way that you've worked at Clario? Yeah, I, I think, honestly, I don't think what we do at Clario would be possible outside of BigQuery ML. And one of the main reasons is I talked about feature engineering earlier and that idea that's a core concept of machine learning. We've been able to write um, custom transformation code. So we write code that is configured and that code creates the features um, dynamically. Wow. So when we configure each client, we're able to go in, provide these are the types of features we want to create and uh, those features are then automatically built in BigQuery, and they are then timelined for every customer. Um, so that dynamic transformation, that configurable transformation, uh, is extremely powerful. And the fact that it then feeds directly into the machine learning models in BQML uh, is where the magic lives, right? That's where the magic happens. Um, the I think another part of it is the XGBoost, the predictive models that we build for the customers in BigQuery, those aren't the only capabilities of BigQuery ML that we use in the engineering process. Um, a lot of them are about monitoring the pipeline. Hmm. So BigQuery ML has um, ARIMA forecasting where they're actually able to look for anomalies. And so when clients are sending us data, we're able to use machine learning to actually analyze the streams of data that we receive from customers and look for anomalous outcomes, see where maybe something broke in the pipeline or That's maybe, <laughs> yes, right, the quality of data coming in. Um, the acceleration of features, I think, is the biggest thing that's been able to, to, to occur for the team. Um, we have uh, one of our VP of engineering, he says one of his favorite things is um, removing code from our software. Uh, and what he means by that is as BigQuery ML has added additional features and as GCP overall has added addi additional features, we've actually been able to delete a significant amount of code wow. um, that supports maintainability, right? We're now relying on SLAs and APIs mm -hmm. rather than our own homegrown developed code. Um, so that has been a, a huge part of it. We partnered very closely with the team at BigQuery ML on uh, alphas and betas, and now into Vertex AI uh, related to their um, upcoming features. The beauty there is we got a voice in the pipe or the um, uh, roadmap for those services, and have actually been able to um, influence that roadmap in ways that resulted in offerings that we can embed directly into the solution and offer right to our customers. So it was not just an acceleration of the benefit to us as developers of software, but that acceleration of, of capabilities was able to be transferred right through to our customers and both of our bottom lines. Could you have ever imagined that these kind of tools would exist today? It seems like these are making a huge difference in how you Think about these things. Absolutely. Um, no, I could not have ever imagined <laughs> this uh, This would be the world. Um, the, the latest change is as mind-blowing, right? So looking at the capabilities uh, that we've talked about so far has yeah. been mind-blowing. Uh, but then seeing the capabilities related to Gen AI uh, that are coming online uh, in the last year, really, sure. um, has also been mind-blowing. And we've been able to be an early partner with both Vertex AI and uh, BigQuery ML in the Gen AI space. Um, we're using it uh, actively for uh, data cleansing. Uh, it's amazing how you can talk to uh, a computer through a, a natural language interface like a chat bot, right. and you can tell it, um, I need you to look through these millions of rows of data, and when you see this pattern in the data, I want you to correct that and, sh and reshape that data to look like this um, and go, and it'll do it within the database, again, natively within BigQuery. Um, those sim they sound very simple to people, like being able to evaluate a textual string for either sentiment or for just quality, cleaning the data. Yeah. Um, and it's doing it uh, where it actually is comprehending 
uh, to the extent that AI comprehends. It's comprehending what it's seeing in that database and transforming it with context and, and understanding to some extent of what I need it to look like on the way out. Um, that is really game changing for data quality. Um, and we're even looking into the use of Gen AI through Vertex um, and the large language models that Google is working on now to actually create a, um, a plain English interface for development of the queries and the ML models. So I, uh, you asked that question, I'm amazed where it is now. I honestly can't tell you in 24 months where right. we'll be, <laughs> right? That's what's even more amazing yeah. is thinking about where we are, where we've come from, and then where we're headed is even more mind blowing. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Matt, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you all next time. <laughs>